following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, we're going to start today with a re-examination of the chart that Norm Winsky from Astro Trends sent us uh, the other day. Uh, we are back up into this same area again. We haven't taken out the highs of uh, yesterday as of yet, but we're only a couple points away in the S&P, which we could probably do very easily. And the same thing in the NASDAQ. We're a little farther away on the New York Stock Exchange Index, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. What's interesting is, is that the, in the New York Stock Exchange Index, and it's going to be higher today, so it most probably will um, take it out. But the uh, high yesterday was an exact 61% retracement of the move down from November 2nd into the 16th, that two-week period. Now, if we... Um, take out the high from November the 2nd, uh, this is going to put a, a wrinkle uh, in that long-term uh, chart that I've been looking at over 20 years. It can actually go to the 786. We could go up uh, to the 786 in the NASD, uh, New York Stock Exchange Index, but it's fit so perfectly that um, it would really uh, make me wonder if it's going to fail this year, and we'll have to uh, to wait and see. But that, that pattern is so perfect. I'll put that up again because I think it's that important. Uh, in fact, it's very important uh, from my perspective anyway because that's the main stock market. It's not these 20 stocks that they have moving back and forth all the time. So anyway, we want to keep an eye on that just to see, uh, to, see what, uh, to see what happens with it. Now, there was a big article, I guess, by Goldman Sachs yesterday. Uh, about the uh, bullishness that they have towards uh, Goldman's uh, towards Apple, the stock of Apple, and folks, go back and historically look at the calls that they've made on Apple. Uh, Tom O'Brien did some work on that and, and posted it into the room, and it, it's really amazing. Hey, everybody's wrong in this business. You know, the thing is, if the smart man learns from his mistakes, the wise man learns from the mistakes of others. And one thing you can never be in this business is perfect. Uh, I can absolutely guarantee that without any uh, hesitation at all. So just because Goldman Sachs says something, you know, don't uh, don't don't bite into it. If you remember back when crude oil was 130 uh, going on, it, well, it was actually about 144 was the high. They had a special report saying $200 oil was around the corner. And uh, it was around the corner, but the corner turned and it went down to $33 a barrel. So just because someone says something, including me, and probably more me than anybody else, but because uh, I had a tendency to put my uh, enthusiasm into some of these things, maybe a little bit more than I should. But just because someone says something, you know, do your own work and uh, make sure that you're you're feeling uh, uh, confident enough with your own work that you're going to be able to do it. Because even though they put a lot of money and research in these things, uh, they can be wrong, just like uh, just like everybody else. I mean, nobody nobody is a hundred percent. That's for sure. Now we have a. We have one uh, stock uh, commodity that uh, there, I wanted to go through a few commodities this morning because we've had uh, we're starting to see some bottoming processes in the grains. Uh, but first, before we get to that, I wanted to uh, bring up the copper chart because uh, we were looking at it at around that 206 level yesterday. Uh, we since rallied uh, four cents a pound. Uh, off the bottom, which is a good start. All this means is that copper should not go below 205 again. That's basically the bottom line. Uh, it's it's held so far right exactly at the uh, 1618, and uh, we'll see if it's going to hold that level or not. But uh, so far, you know, that's at least a good start. If you happen to be in that uh, in that trade, you put your stop under yesterday's low, which is 205.90, and 
and let her rip and see what it does because it's very oversold and we could get a rally. The last rally that we had went from uh, 222 up to 242, so it rallied 20 cents a pound in copper, which is $5,000. So, and if it did that again, it would only be taking it up to the 50% retracement of the last swing from the October high. So don't expect a whole lot right here, but you know, keep an eye on it. The main thing is, is the long-term picture uh, in the copper is uh, it's still got some really good uh, potential. And the reason for that potential is uh, if we look at the weekly chart on copper, you'll see that it stopped exactly at that 786 retracement yesterday. Uh, when we were on the air, we were talking about it. It just happened to do that. And uh, maybe it was a coincidence. Who knows? But uh, at least it stopped right there. Going below there now would not be a very good sign. But I think it has a really good chance here because of that ABCD pattern that's happened since 2014. You'll see the copper went from 330 down to 260 and then 260 up to uh, 295 and then 295 <clears throat> down to the, the projected price objective of, uh, you know, 207. And uh, so, so far, so good, as they say in the trade. But we'll watch it very, very closely, I think. We're also having a... A situation in crude oil uh, it's amazing how much uh, press it gets every time it makes a new low someone comes on and uh, makes an interesting comment about oil going to $25 a barrel which it might be but uh, we are still in this zone here in crude oil now we made four lower lows here uh, just recently all of them below uh, $40 a barrel and each time we've done it it's not stayed there for more than a half an hour and then it's backed up uh, went back up above uh, the $40 per barrel level. That doesn't mean it can't melt down at any time. It To me, it just means that it's probing for a bottom. That's all it means. And I don't know how much selling goes on in there because a lot of the crude oil selling is off the books. In other words, it's cash oil that uh, that sells and pushes these markets down. It's, it's such a huge market. But uh, any move below 39.40 in the uh, in the world would tell us that uh oh you know we've got new contract lows coming far below the thirty seven dollar per barrel level and that would get us down into the twenty five dollar per barrel level uh, if in fact that's going to case so write this uh, number that well to keep it in mind anyway thirty nine forty seven in the oil that would be breaking a one point two seven expansion of the move from uh, August through October that would uh, put a great deal of pressure on the market and it would most probably you know be getting ready you know to go uh, a whole lot lower would be uh, be the the what I would be looking for anyway remember the commodity markets are still uh, in disarray as far as a bullish side they keep going lower uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of them here because they're they're getting close. I don't think these would be the grain markets. We're going to look at here. We're going to look at corn and and uh, corn and beans, and I think I have wheat here too. But I know I have corn and beans, and uh, want to take a look at those because they are getting close. Uh, they're not there yet, but I believe after the holiday of Thanksgiving and, and December is usually, a, uh, they hardly ever have a uh, move starting in December in the grains, but we want to be watching these at the first of the year because they have some long-term patterns that look very interesting. We'll start out uh, with the uh, with the soybean market. We'll look at the uh, long-term weekly market in soybeans, and I'll put that up, and you'll see that, uh, well, hold just a second here if I can get this to work. As you can see here, uh, we had this huge move uh, from 2012 when beans hit uh, $18. We're now half that price down at uh, 860 And as you can see, in 2014, we made a perfect 61% retracement uh, of the move down from 2012 to 2013. And now we've completed the big ABCD, and as you can see, there's a longer term uh, a bullish uh, butterfly pattern forming down here in the eight, uh, 850 area uh, in soybean. So we want to see if this is going to uh, if this is going to hold this area. So we'll watch it very, very closely here. But as I mentioned, it's very difficult for a, a mark. Well, not difficult, but, but it hasn't happened very often where we've had a situation where uh, soybeans have actually turned. 
uh, ahead of time uh, before, well, not I mean ahead of time, but during the month of December. Usually it's the month of January. Now, if we take a look at soybeans on the daily basis, you're going to see uh, shorter term patterns here getting down to this level. But we have uh, broken below the 1.27 level. Uh, we're, we're a little bit lower again today. We're approaching to take out these lows, which not that's not uh, unheard of because we still think we're we're going to go a little bit lower into the 840s, maybe 830s level per bushel in beans. But we want to be watching it because, uh, as you see from these charts, when beans rally, you know they can move, you know, uh, book uh, a dollar and a half a bushel, which is seventy-five hundred dollars, you know, very very quickly, and the risk at these levels is going to be small because the whole world is bearish and uh, no one's pressing it to the downside. In other words, open interest is not increasing as new beans are making new lows. And so you want to be watching that from a perspective of a really strong short covering rally. But I believe that it'll, we've got probably four or five more weeks of choppiness would be my guess before we, we finally, uh, you know, reach a bottom down in here. So we want to keep it on our watch list. Much like we did copper, you know, we, you know, when copper got to 220, you know, it, it looked like it wanted to go to 208. That's what happened. So we just want to keep an eye on these beans because they, uh, they still have a potential, but they haven't, uh, they haven't happened as of yet. Now the next one we're going to take a look at is uh, corn, and uh, this was one that we, uh, we were able to participate, participate in this summer and get out of it right as the highs were being made. Uh, you'll see that uh, uh, July is usually the month where corn tops this year. It topped on uh, the uh, 13th of July. It made a perfect ABCD at that time, stopping exactly at the 1.27, uh, $4.44 per bushel. Uh, and then since that time, we've we've dropped 70 cents a bushel down into the 38 uh, or to the 786 level. Now, if you'll notice uh, on this chart, the corn is acting much stronger than beans. Beans have already taken out the lows of last October, not just the lows of 2015, but the lows of 2014. So soybeans are much much weaker than the corn, and corn is a much larger crop in bushel size. Than, and also in dollar value than, than, the, uh, than the soybeans. So we want to watch that. We're going to have Rich Anderson on uh, probably right after the holidays. Uh, he'll be at his summer or his winter home, uh, and we'll be able to uh, see him more often because he doesn't stay as busy during the winter as he does during the uh, spring uh, planting season. So we'll be able to get him on the air uh, a little more often. But we do want to have a, uh, an eye out on beans, wheat, and corn. Wheat is acting uh, a little bit more bullish than the corn because it's at a little bit higher level. Uh, it hasn't broken down nearly as much, which is another sign that maybe there's a turn coming in some of these uh, some of these commodities. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the gold and silver and copper when we uh, come back from the break, but uh, we want to watch what's happening uh, over all these things soon. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to post uh, the chart the last couple of days of gold. Uh, from the high we made up here at almost $1,100, well, it's 1098 uh, last week. Uh, we've rallied back to the 61% retracement. We actually hit 1085 uh, and changed last night. Uh, we're trading around 1081 right now in the gold. Uh, we completed that ABCD small uh, retracement. Now, if gold is, is really turning here, it's got to get above the 1192 level, uh, which is above the 786 of this last move. As you can see, when you're looking at this hourly chart, if you're looking at it you know, each day, uh, if you'll notice from the 18th and now we're into the 20th, that each of these bottoms has been a 786 retracement of the previous low, making it the 135 pattern that was uh, the favorite of Roy Longstreet and his son Bill. So uh, that's a very good pattern because it forces you to trade in the direction of the short-term trend, which if, if you have higher bottoms, that is the short-term trend. So uh, this is what's happening right now. Now, I still believe that uh, we've got one more leg to go. Uh, on the downside in gold because of the, if we take a look uh, at the uh, longer term uh, chart here for the, uh, the the daily chart in the uh, gold market you'll see that uh, we have a 1.27 expansion uh, down at the uh, 1050 per ounce level and if you stop and think folks we did make a you know some type of a bottom 
down here at the 1062 level, but we've gone nowhere in two days. You know, all we were able to do was to rally, you know, $22 an ounce, which is a very pathetic for a rally in gold. So what we'd be expecting now is to see another low come in sometime next week at around the you know, the 1050 per level. And since everybody wants to buy stocks and nobody wants to buy gold or silver, that's most probably, you know, what's going to happen because there is certainly euphoria, you know, in the stock market since last uh, Friday. You know, we looked so terrible uh, last Friday and then all of a sudden, you know, you come in and I was looking for a three-day rally, but this is a five-day rally. You know, this is the fifth day of the rally. And that's uh, that's an unusual situation also. And if we get above that November 2nd high uh, in the New York Stock Exchange Index, folks, boy, I'll tell you, I'm going to have to get on my, my trusty little burrow and ride out into the desert and do some meditation because uh, this is going to break that long-term pattern that's been so perfect. And uh, so we'll see. Today will be... Uh, an interesting day. We'll see if there's a powering through. We're very close to the highs uh, already without the market opening. And as soon as it opens, I'm sure that will most probably, we're only a point away uh, in the S&P and just a couple points in the NASDAQ. So we're most probably going to open higher uh, into that zone. So we'll see how much strength uh, that it has, uh, you know, coming in into that level. Uh, so we want to watch that uh, also closely. Now, we have a, a, a really important number here that we're watching here uh, in Treasury bonds this morning because the uh, the bonds are poised for a breakout here if we can get them above the 155 level. Uh, there's been a little bit of resistance in there uh, at that 155 level, but we have a, a much larger target uh, outstanding in the bonds, uh, which would come in around 155 16. So if we can, you know, break above the 155 level, but here again, you know, you got stock strong and bond strong at the same time. There's no flight to quality because certainly there's absolutely no risk in the market at all. I mean, that that big down week that we had, three and a half percent last week, is is in the history books, and no one can even remember it. How bad it, how bad it actually looked. But in fact, this is what, uh, this is what in fact did happen. So. You know, if you stop and look at it, it would really look terrible. Now, we've rallied back, like as I mentioned, we've rallied back to the 61% uh, retracement level in the New York Stock Exchange Index, but we have already hit the 786 in the Dow, the 786 in the NASDAQ, and the 786 in the S&P. We've already hit those numbers. So any move above that with any gusto is going to say, yeah, these, these are going to go up to the next level, which would be, you know, right around uh, 21, uh, 2103, I believe, in the S&P would be the next level that it could most probably go to. So that's the, that's the, the uh, situation that we see uh, right now, but we'll have to wait and see. It's still early Friday, and uh, many times, you know, the market will open higher, and then uh, selling will come in. But whether that does or not, we don't know. If it's really bullish, it's going to go busting through there without any trouble. You'll see uh, 2093 uh, very quickly in the uh, in the S&P, and you'll see uh, the, uh, the uh, NASDAQ get above uh, – you know, 4,700. We're at 4,677 uh, as we as we speak. We just took out the highs of the last two days in the Nasdaq. We haven't quite done it yet in the S&P, but but we're very very close. Okay, we will take a little break. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, we will be looking here. The market is opening pretty strong. We got the Dow up about, uh, we'll look, it'll be up about 80 based on what the futures are doing. As you know, the Dow opens in rotation, so you don't get to see all the stocks open at once uh, like you do with the NASDAQ. So uh, we are within a point or so, in the, well, actually one point in the S&P. We did take out the highs in the NASDAQ uh, by a little bit, so we'll We'll see what happens after the first uh, hour of trading to see if this is going to be a day where the market makes just a slightly higher high and then rolls over. We'll we'll just uh, just wait and see. The long term pattern still looks bearish to me, but boy, it keeps wanting to rally. So it's hard to stand in front of a freight train that hasn't got any uh, resistance against it. So we'll we'll need to wait. We've had a question from one of our listeners about the crude oil. The fact that it's made these uh, the last three days we made lower lows by just a few pennies each time. 
uh, from a technical perspective, that's pretty good from uh, being able to, to, to buy uh, with risk. The reason why is, folks, usually when a market is bearish like we've seen in oil recently and it breaks down into new low grounds, you'll see a really strong indication of more selling coming in that. And you're not seeing that uh, so far these last three days in crude oil. And, it, and the chart that we posted shows that there's some cycles that are due this week. And that could be you know what's happening but if we go below the 3942 level in the crude oil that would tell you that now you're starting to accelerate down and we're trading at 4012 right now so that's only a heartbeat away you know from uh, where you could be i mean it, you know crude oil will move that fast in a matter of a second so uh, just remember, if crude gets below that 3942 uh, level, uh, there's trouble in River City, or at least Oil City anyway. So we'll see if, uh, if that's going uh, to be the case. We'll have to uh, just wait. Now, I wanted to make one other comment. Let's, let's assume, and it, so far the assumption is correct, that I'm totally wrong, that uh, this last week's rally is the start of a big leg in the, in the market. Uh, then there's a couple of stocks that you want to start watching. First of all, we believe that we've made some type of a pretty significant 786 retracement in copper. So you want to start looking at some of the copper stocks, the copper mining like Freeport McMoran and some of those others uh, that have a potential to uh, – you know, have a move uh, to the upside. So if this is the case, those stocks will be tagged along. There'll be a lot less risk involved because, uh, you know, they're tremendously oversold. And so that uh, that could be that could be the case of, of what we're what we're watching here. So so far, we're you know, it's only been open about seven minutes, but we're still strengthening here uh, in the Nasdaq and the S&P. S&P still hasn't quite made new highs, but it's a point away. Believe me, if it got that close, it didn't, uh, it didn't get there for no reason. So it's going to take those highs out. And there should be some resistance at the 2093 level uh, in the, uh, the, the December futures for the, uh, the S&P. We're within a point now, or less than a point now in the S&P. So it's going to happen very, very, very shortly here. The, the, that, the Dow Jones is still above the 786. The NASDAQ is above the 786. So it's very difficult, you know, to be a seller right now. Maybe in a half an hour, these markets will sell off and you'll have a better chance. But I wouldn't sell into this early morning strength just for the fact that, you know, we're right at these levels and we could easily see, uh, you know, buy stops uh, coming in and then they could, you could run a little bit higher. Remember, this is a Friday and an up week. Last week was Friday and a down week, and we, what we do, we close 212 points lower in the Dow. So this is a Friday and an up week, so you got to remember that. Remember, the close is going to be very important because of the fact that we're uh, you know, standing right at uh, these numbers, and we're breaking through these long-term uh, seven, eight, six, and you know, these numbers are so darn accurate that you have to uh, you have to respect them. Now, the chart that I've posted into uh, Tiger TV is the long-term Nasdaq chart. Uh, excuse me, New York Stock Exchange Index chart. And yesterday, I was interviewed uh, by a group out of London, and uh, I made a, I showed the presentation of what was happening in 2009 to what's happening. Now, and uh, the, the chart patterns are basically mirror images of one another. We were making a three drive to a bottom pattern in March the 5th of 2009, much like we did here uh, on uh, May the 29th or May 19th when we topped in the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. And we still have just basically got back to the 61% retracement of that. So that's telling you that all of these stocks that are out there are not doing nearly as well as those 150 stocks of the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow that are making these uh, making these things, uh, you know, go uh, a lot, uh, a lot higher. So you have to respect that. Now, there was uh, one of the Dow stocks uh, last night, which was Nike, and that had completed uh, some really big uh, patterns here. I'm going to pull this up a little bit and see if I can get it, see how much it's up today. Yeah, it's up about, uh, yeah, it's back to the old highs again. We got down to 119, and the, but that big ABCD, well, it's almost a new highs. We're only about a point or two. That's one of the reasons for the Dow's strength today is the strength in Nike itself because uh, we'll see. Now, we just made a new high. Uh, in the S and P from the from the previous high, we just hit the uh, two uh, 2090 level. So watch the the 293 would be the next level that uh, that we would be watching. So we want to keep an eye 
keep an eye on that and uh, see what uh, see what happens. But it, you know, you just can't uh, at this early morning strength. You know, on a Friday, uh, you know, it could really easily accelerate. If you want to, if you want to try to be a seller, of this the thing is that we've made new highs now. Wait for the market to, uh, you know, get down and then, uh, you know, to move. Uh, down a little bit and then sell the little retracement back because the shorts are certainly scared to death so there's no reason to uh to, to, to no reason to to no reason to fight it oh we've got a question here from someone about the uh one second here i've got to turn off uh, my beeper because the nike beeper just went off okay we've made highs in just about everything so far all right let's take a look at the euro because uh the euro has been a uh really nice one to watch as far as uh, trading uh, over a period of the, the last uh, several days. If we take a look at the 30-minute chart in the euro, we're still in a, a really strong downtrend. But what we're doing now is we're making a uh, an ABCD leg up at the 61% retracement. And then last night, we backed off to the 61% retracement. And that would take us up you know, to the uh, 170 uh, 70 level, which is about 70 pips from uh, where we are right now. So we'll see uh, see what uh, we're looking at it. So that's really what we're we're keeping an eye on here with the euro. This thing looks like it's got a chance here. Uh, the bottom that we had at that uh, 106.20 level was a you know longer term uh, pattern from a, a smaller ABCD over the last three weeks. That's enough to give this market a little bit more gusto, but. Uh, until you see that, just sell the rallies in the euro. That's the easiest trade of all because every time it rallies uh, uh, anywhere between 70 and 100 pips, it's been a, uh, a pretty good sale uh, during that time. So you want to, you know, keep it's better to trade with the trend than against the trend. So far, you know, it's really funny because when you when you have the uh, when you have the the uh, Bloomberg telling everybody about how low prices are going to go for oil. And the oil breaks below the previous day's low by just a few pennies and doesn't break. It makes you wonder if I were short that. So you see, I would be a little bit suspect uh, in the uh, in the oil because of the fact that there's no follow through, you know, to the downside. That's uh, that's really what I would be looking. The same thing uh, in the stock market. We make a higher high by a point uh, in the S and P from uh, Wednesday. And uh, whether it follows through or not, then you have to wait and see. Because if, if after the first half hour, you know, and that's only another 17 minutes, you're, you're not sharply higher in stocks, it's going to make you wonder if that's really a good breakout or not. So you'd want to watch for a spot for a potential, uh, you know, short sale. But right now, it, it's going to have a little bit of resistance, and I mean a little bit, at 2093 uh, in the S&P futures. Uh, the uh, the, the uh, Nasdaq, interestingly enough, just made a 1.27 of the move from Wednesday down through Thursday and then into Friday. So there's not been any selling in the market at all. The VIX index has been telling us that. Uh, the, you know, the move down yesterday in the S&P from high to low was a total of 14 points, which is virtually, you know, nothing at all when the or your normal volatility is going to be 20 points on a day. So... There's still a lot of people wanting to buy stocks, and uh, they're, they're the people that are right right now. There's no, uh, there's no if ands or buts about it. Uh, we are approaching the uh, situation where if we if we close really strong today with the Dow up at like 120 or 150, uh, you know these all these patterns could fail because there was a really strong cycle coming in here on the 17th or 18th. And that's two days ago. This is the 20th, and it's making new highs. That means that cycle is no good. That's the that's the bottom line. So you certainly don't want to certainly don't want to stand in front of the freight train as it's uh, moving through here. So we'll we'll be watching it. The U.S. dollar is still strong. It doesn't uh, appear to be uh, backing off uh, nearly as much. The Japanese yen uh, versus the U.S. dollar has held the, the level of that 123.70 uh, pretty well, which usually corresponds with lower prices in stocks. But we're not seeing it yet in the stock market. You know, the market is still strong in the early hours, so there's not really much that you can do to uh, to fade it because it's just too strong. There's just uh, there's more buying coming in. You don't want to you don't want to fade it. We're not you know we're not very far from the. See, we're only 40 handles away 
Uh, let me see, 20. No, we're only 20 handles away from a uh, potential uh, breakout of the 21, third, no, it is 40 handles, the 2134 level uh, in the S&P. If we break that one out, folks, uh, that's going to be really surprising to me because that's such a big number up there, you know, based on the long term. I still believe this is a rally back, but, you know, it's rallying more than it should. So you just have to stand uh, stand aside and uh, wait and see, you know, what the next level, you know, is uh, is going to be. We just uh, we just went above the 155 level uh, in Treasury bonds. And uh, uh, like we mentioned before, there's some really strong uh, numbers up here in the 155.20 to 156 uh, level in T-bonds where you have a equal moves from what we had during the last rallies. Uh, and uh, the, the, the Federal Reserve basically has, uh, I don't know why they're not raising rates. The market has raised rates for them already. The question is why they don't want to do it is still a mystery to me. They have everything in the world uh, going for them. They got a good stock market, a good bond market, you know, and everybody is in euphoria. This is the time to do it. Maybe they just don't want to put a uh, dampening on the party. But, uh, you know, once they start raising rates, it's going to be uh, one one after another over a long period of time is my, is my assumption. And, you know, I, I could be wrong, but these charts are telling me that rates are coming, rates are going to be going higher. So whether that's going to be uh, the case or not, you know, one has to uh, to wait and see. But we're still strengthening here. We've got the uh, the Dow has now uh, went way above the 786, as has the Nasdaq, and uh, also the German DAX is, uh, has taken out that previous high that we had the other day. So there doesn't appear to be any stopping of this uh, of this market early this early in this morning. After the first hour. That'll be a little different story, but we're almost a, well, we're only a point away from that uh, that level that I was watching, which will be the uh, 2093 level uh, in the S&P, and we'll see if that's going to be the case. All I'm doing with that, folks, is I'm just taking the high that we had yesterday at the 29 level and then the low at 2075, and I'm doing a 1.27 expansion of that, and that takes you uh, right into that uh, level that uh, I'm talking about, which is the... Uh, uh, 2093 level. We're only a point away from that, so we, we should make that without any, without any trouble at all. Is is uh, the, well, we're 20, <laughs> we're, we're we're there already. That means it could go a lot higher, possibly. Who knows? But that's the first one, anyway. And uh, if it gets above that, then you know you're looking at 2097 and then 2100. It could go a lot higher. So, market wants to go higher. So don't don't fight it. You know, be uh, be looking at uh, things that are going down, like the euro and some of the others that are that are pretty good. Um, okay, uh, so someone's asked a question about the copper of uh, you know if they some that bought it yesterday uh, at that uh, 206 level that we which was the 786 retracement on the weekly. Uh, if you bought it there, you put your stop right below uh, that low, 20580 or something. You know. It's already moved, uh, you know, four cents in your favor, so don't don't uh, let that go to a loss because you know if it if it fails those numbers just like we failed here uh, in the stock market early in the morning, then you're you're looking at a market that wants to go, you know, substantially uh, higher and you don't want lower and you don't want to you don't want to be in in front of it because the trend is is certainly still down and we know that some of these patterns fail, they're not. Uh, they're not etched in uh, stone, as we can see in the stock market. So keep keep that in mind. I'm uh, a little uh, sort of friendly to crude oil here just because of the way that it's acting. Uh, you know, it, it makes those lower lows by just a tick or two. And that's a huge market, folks. That That's a, that's a, a real heavily traded market. And uh, so you want to keep... Uh, you know, the, the, you have to ask yourself the question, why is there more selling every time it makes new lows? Three days in a row, we made lower lows by a penny or two, and then it didn't go, you know, it didn't go anywhere. So take a little break here. Biotech is booming, but for how long? 
Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge for daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex. Up next on TFNN. Okay, boys and girls, uh, we are higher in the market the first half hour. We're going to wind up the show here a little bit. I, first of all, I want to wish everybody a wonderful weekend. And of course, we got the holiday next week. Uh, we'll be closed Thursday and Friday here at TFNN uh, to be with our families and stuff. So this will be the first year in many years that I don't spend it with Mark and Paula Douglas. Uh, and uh, Mark, she was going to have a, have us over, but I'm just uh, too emotionally, and so is my wife, uh, to going over to see and work. So we're going to meet her someplace else uh, for Thanksgiving. For many years, what we've done is we worked at the uh, 
the gospel mission there in Scottsdale, cooking turkeys and cleaning up and everything on uh, Thanksgiving. We spent many Thanksgivings doing that, so that's a potential. We might do that again this year. It's uh, You want to f- feel how lucky you are, folks, just do something like that. Uh, uh, someday for a holiday, go to some place where these people have virtually nothing, and just having a warm meal is is really something. So uh, we're very blessed. The fact that uh, we have so many things going for us, it's, uh, that's why it's called Thanksgiving. So we'll see. So far, the two uh, 2093 level is held in the S and P. Whether that's going to continue or not, you know, we'll have to uh, see how the end of the day goes. But the first hour of trading is is the crazy hour, and that's why it's one of the best uh, the best times, uh, you know, to be watching for entries. But we'll we'll just have to wait and see how the market ends up today. Because if it ends strong, uh, that's telling us that uh, this rally might extend into next week also. Because we were straight down last week from the second to the sixteenth, we were two down, uh, three and a half percent drop in about nine trading days and we've get we've gotten most of that back uh, more than 78 percent of it back in the indices with the exception of the nyse uh index but uh that's the one that counts but that's not the one that's traded so you've got to watch the ones that are traded and those are the apples and the the googles and all the others that are that are out there so we'll watch that uh closely also but we are in an area where we're going to have some extreme volatility next year it certainly looks that way because there's just uh these chart patterns have been hanging here for a very long time that's usually a bad sign live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may god bless trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.